This is GD Live at PALS with teacher Alex. Today's subject is GD Science and the topic is disease and pathogens. Quick overview. Pathogens and methods of transmission, prevention of disease, vaccination and effects of disease on populations. Another way that your body's homeostasis can be disrupted is through disease and pathogens. Pathogens are microorganisms or viruses that cause disease. The following table identifies five of the most common ways in which pathogens can be transmitted or spread. Through droplet infections, for example, when you cough, sneeze, or talk, tiny droplets fly out of your mouth, and these dog droplets contain the microorganisms that can infect other people. For example, uh, tra pathogens then that are transmitted this way are the flu, tuberculosis, or the common cold. <clears throat> direct contact. Some diseases are spread by direct contact of the skin, for example, athlete's foot or genital herpes. Contaminated food and water. Eating raw or undercooked food or drinking water contaminated by sewage means you take large numbers of microorganisms straight into your digestive tract, which can cause infections. In water, this can be cholera or amoebic dysentery. In food, this is often a salmonella infection. By body fluids, pathogens can enter the body through body fluids such as blood, cuts and scratches or needle punctures. An example is HIV, AIDS or hepatitis. Or through vectors. A vector is an animal that spreads a disease causing organism from one host to another without suffering any harm itself. Vectors include mosquitoes and house flies. Examples here are malaria, dengue fever, or the best Nile virus. Prevention of disease. How can we prevent disease ourselves from getting infected or prevent others from getting infected? Some general methods. Many diseases can be prevented by simple sanitation methods, as well by maintaining a healthy lifestyle, by routine medical checkups, by personal hygiene like washing your hands often and regularly, covering your mouth when you sneeze, and by proper nutrition to keep your immune system strong. There are specific methods of preventing di diseases and these include immunization by vaccines. Immunizations are another way to prevent infections. Many infectious diseases such as measles, polio, tetanus and diphtheria can be controlled with vaccines. A vaccine introduced into your body enables you to develop immunity without suffering from the actual disease that the vaccine prevents. So how does a vaccine work? First of all, a dead or weakened version of a virus is given to someone in a vaccine. The small-scale virus infection raises the body's alarm. It activates the immune system. The immune system produces virus-fighting antibodies that stick around even after the, particle, uh, after the uh, practice battle is won. Not only the antibodies, but as well specialized cells that can very quickly produce these antibodies again. When the body encounters the real virus, those antibodies are already there and ready to fight for the body, body's health. Your immune system knows the virus now and it can very quickly respond to its infection. Prior to vaccination, for example, many infectious disease had devastating results on humanity. Millions of lives were lost in widespread viral epidemics. Between the 15th and 18th century, the arrival of European colonists to the Americas introduced several deadly viruses to them. Some Native American populations were reduced by 80% from disease, such as smallpox, measles, and influenza. The damage done by these viruses helped the colonists to conquer the Native populations and changed the course of history. Widespread outbreaks of disease still have the power to change demographics and even lead to extinction. But as well, vaccines can help to prevent 
such bad events. For example, the polio vaccine has almost eradicated polio worldwide from the 1980s, as we can see with very high numbers, to almost no infections in 2018. Some questions to the short presentation. What is the best way to prevent salmonella poisoning? Boiling your water, using mosquito repellent, covering your mouth when you sneeze, or not consuming raw food such as eggs? The correct answer here is D. We saw that salmonella infection can be uh, caused by eating raw foods. This is how salmonella spreads. The next three questions are based on this small paragraph. Let's read it together. The scientist designed an experiment in which he took a random sample of patients who tested positive for measles and found out whether, prior to the infection with the disease, they had received no measles vaccine, one dose of vaccine, or two doses of vaccine. He surveyed 100 patients who tested positive for measles and found that seven people of the 100 who tested positive had received one dose of vaccine, three people had received two doses, and 90 people had not had the vaccine. The experiment is designed to answer which of the following questions. Why do so many people not receive the measles vaccine? Can people who have had the measles in the past get it again? How effective is the measles vaccine? Are older people more susceptible to measles than younger people? You can pause the video if you want to think about the answer. The answer is coming now. The correct answer is how effective is the measles vaccine? With the information we get we can answer this question to some extent. This is what question 3 is about actually. Let's have a look at question 3. What is the effectiveness of two doses of measles vaccine at preventing measles? Express your answer in percent. Two doses of measles vaccine are... The answer is coming now. You can pause the video. 97% effective at preventing measles. How do we get to 97%? Three people had received two doses. That means three people out of a hundred had received two doses. That means the vaccine is 97% effective at preventing measles. The scientist repeated the experiment with a different set of 100 measles patients and found that five people had experienced one, had received one dose of measles vaccine, three people had received two doses, and 92 people had not had the vaccine. How can he best reconcile the data from these two studies to state a conclusion? The measles vaccine is 90% effective at preventing measles. The measles vaccine is highly effective at preventing measles and is most effective with two doses. The effectiveness of measles vaccine is variable based on when it is received. Three doses of measles vaccine can completely protect people from measles. The correct answer here is B. The measles vaccine is highly effective at preventing measles and is most effective with two doses. This was GD Life at Pals with teacher Alex. The subject was GD Science and the topic Disease and Pathogens.